Hey YouTube, uh, today I want to share with you a little bit about Native American spirituality. Now, um, most of my ancestry is German. Uh, there's a little bit of a, I'm not sure if it's French or whatever, but 75% of it's German. However, about a quarter of it is Native American. Now, uh, <laughs> my dad's registered with the tribe, I'm not. Uh, something to do with the fact when I was born and my parents divorced. He got registered after I was born or something like that. Anyway, yeah, I, I wasn't able to ever get registered, but who cares. Uh, I don't need a card from some government telling me who and what I am. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, it, it, this side of, of me that I haven't really touched upon on my YouTube channel. And I really wanted to get into it because there's a lot of interesting things that a lot of people don't know about Native Americans. Specifically, if you are not really uh, native to North America, you weren't born here, or you, uh, well, yeah, or you, you know, you're in another country right now, watch this. Uh, you probably didn't grow up, you know, hearing a whole lot about Native Americans and their spirituality. Well, uh, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of interesting aspects. Native American spirituality. Uh, so there are several tribes, the Sui and the Hopi, which have uh, documented legends. Uh, the Spider Queen and stuff like that. Now, uh, keep in mind that this is you know done in mythological tents. Uh, in Native American spirituality, aspects of nature just merely represent that aspect of nature. They didn't necessarily believe that it was a creature. They never built you know. Well, it, some of them had altars, but anyway, we'll just get to that in a moment. Um, I'm a highest 57 on my Native American side. Uh, I got some chalk time on me. Uh, my family that's documented, they own a whole lot of land in uh, Texas and in other areas. Uh, but there's also, uh, I want to say Delaware. I'm not really sure. It's one of the states. I, mean, I would have to call my grandma, mother on it. She's uh, either full bred or pretty much full full Indian, full blood Indian, or Native American. That's another thing. Um, most of them, most Native Americans rather prefer to be referred to by their tribe. Um, a second would be Native American. There are some that actually would prefer Indian over Native American. Most actually get offended. Call them Indian, not because they have anything against you know, Indian Indians, but it's because that they feel that, you know, in the words of it, uh, of, you know, people I've talked to, <laughs> Because I've had, you know, I've socialized with some who are in my family. Uh, they don't feel like they should be labeled something that uh, somebody from, I'm kind of cleaning it up a little bit, somebody from Europe who couldn't find his way with a compass uh, and thought he was somewhere else and labeled them that, you know. Uh, you know, it's nothing to do with against the Indians, but it's just, you know, Christopher Columbus mistaken them for, for Indians. So it's a false identification. Now, granted, you know, the names that the tribes have are the English translated versions. That's pretty much the best that, you know, they, they'll, you know, they'll sell for that, usually. Uh, but, yeah, Indian usually is a term that doesn't really sit well with them. They're Native. They're Native American. Um, like I said it has nothing to do with people who are from India. It has something more to do with uh, Christopher Columbus not being able to find his way on a map. Uh, anyway, I have with me an Indian rain stick. When you turn it, let's put it right here. When you turn it, makes a pretty cool noise. Now there's, depending on the tribe, yeah, there's different, uh, they, they design it differently. As a matter of fact, in certain uh, aspects of their, certain uh, crafts are designed specifically for certain tribes. They uh, have their own symbols and whatnot. Also, there have been uh, swastikas found in Native America. Um, yeah, so that's a little interesting thing. Maybe Christopher Columbus wasn't completely wrong after all. But uh, one aspect I want to get in touch with is the whole aspect of spirit guides. Because a lot of people misrepresent this and think that, you know, a spirit guide speaks through you. And then you go into some little crazy trance. Okay, the spirit guide is usually, uh, according to, like I said, there are actually, a lot of tribes don't have spirit guides, but the ones that do, they do vary. Uh, I'm going to kind of mix, mash them together. I'll try to find links down below, if I can find any. 
But a uh, spirit guide is the animal or nature representation of yourself. It can change with age. Uh, mostly, uh, my way. mostly uh, it takes the form of what your inner nature is. Sometimes it can take what you fear. And it just depends on like what what is your goal that you're seeking. Are you seeking to overcome something or whatever? Um, some ask, some uh, legends and what not, they'll have you, uh, you're supposed to learn the name of your spirit guide. And then once you do that, you attain, you know, um, self-recognition. But, uh, yeah, you actually have to go into a form of meditation. A lot like, you know, the type of meditation you'll see uh, throughout Asia, India, and in particular, and also in Buddhist sects. And basically, it's the same thing, the same aspect of knowledge of yourself. You're just learning more about yourself. The more you learn about your spirit guide, the more you learn about yourself. So it's just this more spiritual aspect of looking at things. Whereas uh, if you're a secular or an atheist or even a pantheist, you can look at it as just knowledge of yourself. But uh, yeah, the animal, it's kind of like embracing the nature within you. And, you know, getting in touch with you and uh, so forth. And... Uh, mastering some aspects, like I said, that where it's uh, where it's what you're supposed to fear. Mastering it is will allow you to master yourself. And I will try, to, like I said, I'll try to provide links because that's actually a jumble of a bunch of Native American spirituality there from different tribes. Um, I guess it suits me since I'm a high fifty seven, so you know, at least a quarter. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of interesting things. Uh, to study about Native Americans. They were, and still are, a very interesting people. Unfortunately, a lot of their legends and everything were destroyed uh, when the Europeans came over and took the land. Uh, there's no real, you can't really sugarcoat it. Now, the Vikings, when they came over here, um, there's documentation, even in some of the Native American tribes. When they came over here, they just did trade. It wasn't until uh, Christian Europe, Europeans not to blame Christianity, but religion did play a major role into wiping out the savages, uh, which is really hilarious considering the fact that the people who were getting, who were doing the killing, weren't these supposed savages. But uh, yeah, so the Vikings actually came in peace. But anyway, that's all I want to say right now. I will probably uh, upload another video going into more detail. Like I said, I only have ten minutes. I hope I didn't go over.